Howdy, howdy, YouTube. Um, welcome back. This is uh, Jen and Dan doing uh, installment number three of Ask Jen and Dan. A uh, buddy of mine, Brian, asked us on YouTube um, a couple weeks ago. Sorry for getting so late to get it to you, but we definitely want to make sure we did. Uh, it basically says financial issues are always in the top ten of relationship issues. Maybe you guys can give advice on being on the same page. Um, we definitely can. I, I do want to say this is that Jennifer and I are on the same page financially. But we weren't always. Sometimes we didn't even know there was a book. Um, and if we were trying to be on the same page, we didn't even know if we were in the same book. So um, finances can actually destroy a marriage. Uh, they can absolutely destroy a relationship. They can kill a marriage. They can uh, cause people to commit suicide. Um, there's just all kinds of really bad things uh, in regards to finances. And one of the things the Bible talks about is uh, you can't serve two masters. So if you serve the Lord, you can't serve money at the same time. Um, but also keep in mind, people say that the, the love of money is, is or, or money is the root of all evil. That's probably one of the most, un, most misquoted uh, Bible verses that has ever existed. It's not money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, Money is not a bad thing. Money is is like sand. It's it's just something that's just there. We've given intrinsic value to it. Uh, we we basically put something on it. It's just paper with fibers in it and, and metal coins and whatnot. We we give a value to those things so that you can turn around and hand it to somebody in exchange for a product. Uh, you can also spend a, a certain amount of time in every day that you trade that time to get some more of that paper and coins into your coffers but the, the big thing is getting that getting all of that those finances are coming into the household whether it's tens of thousands a month or thousands a month or even hundreds a month getting on the same page with your spouse uh, and I believe the first and foremost is communication uh, this is always going to be a big key with us communicating is is always a major major issue Jen and I that is one thing we have not struggled with I don't believe really from the beginning we, we've been able to talk to each other pretty easily uh, there are times when we do struggle with communication, but it's because at that point in time, I'm usually being stubborn about something, and I don't want to communicate with her. I want to just do my own thing. Uh, I want to act like, well, I'm the big man of the family. I'm, I'm the head of this household, not you, so you're going to do what I say, and that usually doesn't go over very well. Uh, <clears throat> being on the same page, number one, comes with communication. Number two, comes with uh, having similar goals. Uh, one of the goals that Jennifer and I have, we do not, we want to be debt free. We don't want to be in debt. We don't want the uh, mortgage on the house. Um, of the four vehicles that we have, only, only all th three of the four are owned outright. And they're new, they're newer vehicles. They're not, you know, clunkers. Um, we only have car payments on one and that was out of necessity more than anything else because our kids were growing and trying to transfer them back and forth four hours. Uh, because they live with their mom four hours north of us uh, was really challenging because they were outgrowing the vehicles that we had. So we ended up getting a f uh, fourth vehicle with a third row seat and it made life a lot easier. But um, that would normally not have been something we did because we would have normally either saved up the money for the car and paid cash for it or we would have gone a different route. Uh, maybe we would have gotten some financing for it but we would have ended up paying it off very quickly. The third thing I believe is having a similar um, idea of how money should be spent and having like a, a structure around it. For example, Jennifer and I, uh, we do more of a Dave Ramsey hybrid structure. Uh, Dave Ramsey is a good resource for uh, financial well-being. If you uh, buy into his philosophy of paying for everything cash, getting out uh, from being debt free, get, get away to be debt free, and then from then on, paying for everything in cash. Uh, that way, you delay the gratification. You're a little bit smarter with your money by doing it that way. Uh, and then some other things that that I'll, I'll get into, and actually, I want Jennifer to get into is is, is uh, who's the CFO of the family. You know, I'm the CEO of the family, I'm the head of the household because I'm the husband, but uh, I am not the CFO of the family. And I'll tell you, being personal, I'm just gonna be raw with you here. I am a financial buffoon. Um, there have been times in my life where I have made thousands and tens of thousands of dollars a month, every month, like clockwork. And instead of being wise with that, I was foolish with it. I spent it like that money would never go away. And eventually it does. You go through 
mountaintop experiences with finances and you also go through valley experiences with finances and sometimes when you're in that valley it's hard to see the mountaintop that, you, that, that you're approaching that you're eventually going to get to the next time you go through financial financial uh, you go through a financial boom or a financial windfall so because I'm a financial buffoon I have given those um, responsibilities to Jennifer she's a little wiser when it comes to spending money so that is uh, another thing that I would recommend is figure out who is the more frugal of the two, who is the more of the saver, and uh, don't give that um, responsibility to the spender in the family. Um, I, am a, I, am, I collect things that are expensive. Uh, I'm not going to get into what it is, but I do collect things that are expensive, and I used to have a pretty expensive cigar collection, but once I had a heart attack, that kind of went to the wayside. Uh, so, you know, you have to give those discussions, uh, you have that discussion, have that communication and sit down and, and don't just do it off the cuff. Jen and I actually talk about our finances at least once a week. And at the beginning of every month, we really go over what our budget is for the month and, and, and we go from there. But again, it's, it's a willingness on both parts to, um, to hold yourselves Hold yourselves, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pardon me? Accountable. Yeah, accountable. Thank you. Hold yourselves accountable to this plan that you've set up and this program that you choose to follow. Like, if, again, we, like I said, we do the hybrid of Dave Ramsey. Um, I feel like right now I'm kind of rambling, so I'm going to actually just uh, turn it over to Jen and let her get into some of the specifics that she likes to do uh, when, when it comes to finances. And I have to tell you that sometimes it sucks having her in charge because there's money that I, or there's things I want to buy like uh, there's a really nice new shiny thing over here that I want to buy but now is not the right time or like right now we've had a situation happen where uh, our mattress and our dishwasher gave out at the same time those are not things that are cheap to replace but we're able to do so because we planned ahead for those things and uh, we're able to make that, uh, that become a reality in our lives without having to take a major financial risk to be able to replace either one of those things. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jennifer and get some of her uh, feedback on this, considering that she is actually the, the financial head of our household. I have given her that, you know, I've given her the reins on that, and that's because I know how I am with money. Uh, if I had $20 in my, in my wallet, I would spend $20 and one penny because it's more than I had. Um, and, and unfortunately, that is a habit I learned that I have to break, and it's been a tough one to break. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jen right now and let her let her unleash some of her wisdom. Hi there. So thank you for the insight, Dan. That was very good. It wasn't just rambling. Um, basically, with uh, being the CFO, it's not an easy task. I'll just be outright. It's not an easy situation to be in charge of all the all the finances, but... You know, we had a discussion when we first got married is that, you know, he tends to be the spender, I tend to be the saver. Um, so we basically decided that I was going to be in charge of, you know, the bills and the budget and so forth. There's a lot of different things that come into play with being the CFO. You know, you have to weigh out whether, you know, what, what are our goals going to be. That is the key focus. Um, and it's not going to be the same for every family. I'm going to say that right ahead of time. It's not going to be the same with each situ situation. You have some households where it's a steady income and it's going to be the same amount coming into the household every single month. And then you have families like ours, which, you know, sometimes it's a commission only situation. So sometimes our income coming in isn't always, you know, the same every month. So um, you just have to want to plan ahead for things like that. So you never know, like, like Dan was saying, you have peaks and valleys as to what's coming into the household. Um, Dave Ramsey always uh, advises to have what we call an emergency fund. And it's something that, you know, you don't always have an opportunity to have because that's a hard number to have $1,000, you know, just sitting around lucrative funds that you don't touch and don't spend. Um, but I can attest that when we've had that opportunity to have that in place for our household, it has been a lifesaver in case, you know, business dries up one month and then suddenly things aren't coming in as quickly commission-wise. And especially with the lockdowns going on, we currently actually aren't, e aren't even able to go out to the locations and work. So to an extent, you know, as of right now, personally, we're going through a little bit of a setback because we can't go out to work because we, we don't have access to the state locations because of COVID restrictions. So it's just always good to plan ahead if you, if you can. It's totally understandable that 
not everybody has that opportunity to save that you know big amount off to the side but even if it's like a couple hundred dollars that you can put aside each month to say in case things go a little bit hairy here it is so that would be my first you know piece of advice um, running our household for the last seven eight years so that's you know a little bit of wisdom coming from Dave Ramsey of course but also saying that I've experienced it personally also with regards to the income coming in um, you do have to have that dialogue with your partner you know what is our goals going to be for each month each year you know, the next five years are you going to both be working toward clearing, cleaning up debt or are you going to be working toward repairing your credit um, and if you decide not to, that's okay too, but it has to be a dialogue. It has to be an understanding between the both of you as a husband and wife. How are we going to go about paying the bills and what is the ultimate goal? Are we trying to raise our credit scores? Because is, is there something down the line that we want to purchase? You know, as whether it's a new car, a new house. You just have to make sure that you take everything into account because uh, life is, you know, it's never the same. You can have things happen, you know that you're not expecting like health crises and things of that nature so it's always good to just decide what ahead of time what you want to do as far as with your finances go between the two of you and if you're not repairing your credit that's okay if you decide that you're just trying to get by month to month that's okay but we cannot tell you what's going to be right for your family that has to be between the husband and wife based on their situation uh, a good thing to know too is that just because you dictate, okay, you know, the wife's going to be the CFO, doesn't mean that that has to be forever. If you know, maybe you want to say, you know, one's going to take over for the next six months. You want to trade off and see, you know, who who had a better time or had an easier time working it, and then you can just make a decision who who wants to do it ultimately. You know, it, just because you declare one person to do, to do it doesn't mean that that has to be forever. I always want to make sure that I, you know, throw that out there. Uh, another thing too, if you're the person that's the CFO, you've got the other person that's, you know, basically what we call the bystander, um, watching the CFO get the budget, get the bills paid out every month. Um, it is a little hard for that person to understand, well, hey, I thought we had all this money coming in, where did it all go? What I do is I, it's, it's very um, dinosaur-ish, if you will, meaning that, you know, I'm not using a computer or a laptop. Uh, just one second. I have, um, it's not here, sorry. I thought I was, I thought I had it right here. So it's basically just a monthly list is what it is. And it's, it has the month on it and it has every single bill that's due from the 1st down to the 31st. Why don't you go get it? Okay. Hold on. Okay. We'll be right back. Do, 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 do. Do 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 um, but it just gives you an idea of what you can, what what the bills are. So what's to be expected? What's to be expected? So when you are having that dialogue with the person who's not in charge of the finances, you can say, hey, you know, this is what's due between this day and this day. So you can break down your goals by each week, every two weeks, or the full month. You can say, oh, let's put the money aside. And what Dave Ramsey has suggested that we do is what we call financial peace. Is we take an envelope for every single one of these bills. With, the, with our beginning month check and we put the money into each of those envelopes so that every single bill that comes up is already accounted for. Then whatever's left is fun money. Now, you know, sometimes it's not always that easy. Sometimes maybe you don't have enough money to get all the bills paid through the month. Maybe you're in commission only like we are. So sometimes we'll have maybe the bills paid like at least halfway or three quarters of the way ahead of time, envelope ready to go. And, you know, we'll have to go out there and hustle to make those extra sales to come up with the rest of the... The rest of the bills so again everybody's different everybody's households are different um, with us you know sometimes we have to, to, to just sit down like Dan was saying you know even on a Monday night we'll say this is what's due between now and Friday and how are we gonna make that happen if it hasn't already happened and again the envelope system it seems like a pain in the butt it involves having cash you put everything aside in its little envelope but I tell you what um, if you're trying to rebuild your credit 
this is the way to do it because this is how I pulled us out of the muck. When Dan and I met, um, we were both going through ordeals when we first got married. Um, he'd gone through, you know, having to lose a, a house, I believe, at one point. For myself, I had really bad, you know, health issues in back in 2011. And I basically was out of work for almost a year because I was just too sick to work. So the credit, everything was just down to the bottom, <laughs> like the very bottom. So we pulled all of our, you know, so using the envelope system, that was how I was able to get our, um, get our uh, finances back on track. And then another thing too, you want to make sure that, you know, if you're going to repair a credit, are we repairing both husband and wife's credit? Are we focusing on one versus the other? Again, this is only things that you can answer and decide between the both of you. And again, if you're not the CFO and you're the bystander, um, what I would suggest doing is if it's, for instance, the wife and you've got the husband or the wife that's the CFO and the husband's the bystander, you know, have a look at an extra bit of money that you can just say, hey, you know, hey, babe, take like 20 bucks and, you know, this is your, your money for like the week for, for silly stuff. I don't know what the, the amount would be because, again, it depends on the household itself. You know, cause some, some people would be like, oh, I need 100 bucks to spend and go have fun with it every week. So if that's something that you need to incorporate in your budget, be sure to do so. Because you don't want the person not being the CFO feeling like, wow, I don't ever see a dime. You know, you don't want to have that resentment. You don't want to have to create resentment that just doesn't need to be. And, and that's another thing, why you need to make sure you keep the lines of communication open on a week-to-week -week basis so that your partner knows where the money's going and why you might not have, like, quote-unquote, enough or if there's any, you know, glitches or any hurdles. That way you're on the same page and you are... In, in alignment with each other or you're on you're a, a united front rather. So it's just those are little bits of advice that you know from using the Dave Ramsey envelope system um, and just making sure that the two of you are on the same page. And it's not going to be easy. Um, also consider maybe is there anything we can cut out of our budget? Is there anything that we're willing to forgo? You know we're really needing that 1199 YouTube channel or the, not the YouTube, but the YouTube premium, you know, subscription or Netflix or whatever it needs to be. If there's any way you can trim back your bills, do so. But, you know, make sure that you both agree on it. Don't sit there and yell and scream. But um, just, just have to be patient with each other. And that's basically all I wanted to touch on that subject. Did you have anything else to add, Dan? Sure. Okay. So, um... A couple of other things that you want to take into consideration is whether or not you're going to pay a tithe to your church. Uh, Jen and I, for the most part, we try to do that on a regular basis. Um, also with the book that we, The Knuckleheads Guide to Marriage, one of the things that we have set up is that we tithe a tenth of all of our book sales whenever we're at a, at a location or whenever we're given a seminar. We tithe it back to the organization that just hosted us. So if, it, if your church is having a, a Knuckleheads Guide to Marriage seminar and let's say we sell 30 books, well, they're twenty dollars a piece, so thirty times times twenty is, is six hundred dollars. So we'll take sixty dollars and, and donate it right back to the church that just held us. Uh, and then we pay our tithes to our own church, which is a, a church here in Campo. Uh, the other thing is uh, pray together, pray about your your finances, because there are times when there's too much month and not enough paycheck, and then there's other times where there's too much paycheck and not enough month and when you have those types of windfalls, it's easy to want to spend it on frivolous things. But maybe there's a reason why you got that money. Maybe a friend of yours needs to get an alternator put into their car or their catalytic converter went out and they have no idea how they're going to get the money together to do that, to get that paid for. Well, we just got a surplus and we would rather choose to you know, bless somebody with that. And those are discussions you need to have with your spouse. Uh, and I'm not... I'm not trying to get kudos from anybody by saying this, but my wife is a very generous woman. Uh, she is not afraid to take money that we have on us and help people with it. Uh, and I, I'm not either, and I, would, I, I love the fact that I married a woman that cares for others. And it's not about whether or not she can get a new pair of shoes. It's, wow, look at that guy over there. When was the last time you had, you know, when was the last time you had something to eat? And we'll strike up a conversation with him and find out, and then go buy him something to eat. And then try to uh, try to encourage them to get off the streets and see what we can do to help them. But um, I'll go back to say that the number one thing is communication uh, with being on the same page in marriage. Number two is um, having that discussion and determining what 
you know, what program you're going to use. Like Jenna was really went to depth with the envelope system with Dave Ramsey. That has been a life changer for us. And then three, you know, make sure that you have similar goals. Uh, there's certain things that I want to, I want to be able to buy for myself. And Jen will set the money aside so that I can do that. And, you know, I, 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 I love collecting certain things. And Jen's great about that. On the flip side, make sure that you're willing to help her as well and, and, and work towards work towards uh, similar goals. And, and then I'll leave you with this. Uh, is when it comes to finances also, what are your long-term goals? Determine what those are. Uh, Jen and I definitely want to be debt-free, but also something that we want to eventually work our way towards is um, building a landmark here in California. And uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but I'm definitely going to just say that something that, that, that uh, outlasts our generation and generations to come. So um, also we want to build a legacy. You know, uh, we want to have those books. We would like for one billion people to read The Knuckleheads Guide to Marriage. And it's not about the finances. It's about changing lives. Uh, we, we, we poured our hearts into that book and we feel that it was divinely written. Because when we sat down to write, it felt like it, we, it wrote itself in like five minutes. It took no time to write whatsoever. And um, anyway, so those are some of the goals that we have. And then I'll just leave it at this. Uh, if you ever have any questions or you're really struggling, go get help. Go seek help through a CPA, through an accountant. Uh, talk to your pastor. Go through counseling. Uh, get some counseling involved when it comes to to marriage because get those finances under control if you do not it is one of those little foxes that can destroy the mind that the bible talks about but it doesn't just destroy the mind it makes the whole vineyard go away it makes the whole household that runs the vineyard go away it, it can cause major devastation it can create divorces it can create suicide i mean it can create all, all different types of things so it's imperative get on the same page Pray about it. Get help if you need help. And uh, at this point, I need to just say I'm off my soapbox. If you guys have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to, to let us know. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to uh, impart wisdom. We, we actually prayed about this stuff. You know, that God would give us the right words to say when we're when we're filming these. Um, so we hope that it, you know you get something some value out of that. But also, if you have any other questions, please feel free to either send us an email at genvspirit at yahoo.com. Make reference to the Knuckleheads Guide to Marriage. Ask Jen and Dan. Um, you can send me a, a Facebook on it if you want to. Uh, either an IM or you can actually just respond in the comments. Also, when you're done watching this, please you know hit the, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Our goal is that within the next week and a half, two weeks, is to get 100 subscribers. I know we're a small channel right now, but we're building one subscriber at a time. Help that out. We want Our goal is to you know, reach a billion people. One billion people for the Lord when it comes to marriage. We want marriages to survive, we want them to thrive. Just because you're fighting, just because you're struggling, doesn't mean that you have to break up. Amen. You doesn't mean you have to break up. Amen. Get through that. It's those, it's like a broken bone. My wife says this, and I love the fact she uses this analogy. A broken bone, if it's set properly, is much stronger after the break. So, you know, when you have a challenge that you have to face in your marriage, your marriage can come away much stronger after that. And, uh, I will tell you that Jen and I have faced some trials, but try to get between us and watch what happens. You'll be surprised at how quickly she and I will circle the wagons and start repelling you quickly. And, you know, and I'm not challenging anybody to do so, but when it comes to it, Jen and I have a very, very strong relationship with one another. Um, and it, 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 we've, we've had people in the past try to come between us. They're surprised that uh, we don't put up with that. And we have a very, very strong relationship. Um, and that, that comes through prayer, and that comes through time together and willing to compromise on a lot of different things that have happened over our lifetime. Um, anyway, uh, is there anything else that you want to add, Jennifer, no. to, to wrap this up? So, again, please hit the subscribe button. Um, also, like and share the video. Uh, but most, most of all, if you have a question that you want to ask, we're not going to blow your anonymity. I mean, I said my, my buddy Brian. I have, like, 11 people I can think of off the top of my head with the name Brian. So... With that, I will say uh, have a good night, uh, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. Um, don't drop your uh, don't drop your, your your phone in the in the in the bathtub or in the in the sink if you're watching this where you shouldn't be. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll see you later too. Have a good night.